Ukrainian lawmakers are saying that under no circumstances will they give up the fight for the liberation of Crimea. They voted on a declaration that Ukraine would not recognize the contested peninsula as the Russian-named Republic of Crimea. The Parliament of Ukraine is drawing the attention of the world's governments, international organizations and global society to the fact that the Ukrainian people will never recognize the annexation of an inseparable part of its territory, the Autonomous Republic of Crimea, which was seized by Russia in violation of all norms and international laws. The declaration was approved by 74 votes to two. It also included an appeal to the international community not to recognize the annexation or its citizens as Russian subjects. Joining me now with more on the latest developments involving Crimea is James George Jatras. He's the deputy director of the American Institute in Ukraine. I want to welcome you to the broadcast. I know you were there, you say, back in November, Yes, correct? just before all the disorders broke out, yeah. Well, let me get your sense, as you watch the developments, what are the key things that percolate up that you notice and say, okay, this is what we should focus on? I think the key things that all of the problems that came to a head with the demonstrations against uh, President Yanukovych and then the collapse of his government, uh, the, the violence on the streets, none of that has gone away. Uh, we have uh, a revolutionary situation where it's unclear if you have any kind of legal legitimacy to the government in Kiev, whether they even control the streets of Kiev. Do you have these armed groups that were instrumental in the change of power? They're setting up their own armed formations. Now they call a self-defense force. You have people storming into TV studios like this one and beating the head of the studio over the head to force him to resign because they don't like his news coverage. That's the kind of disorder, I think, that threatens the unity of the country and especially other regions of the south and east of Ukraine, never mind Crimea, that make them wonder what their future is in this country and I think uh, increase the prospect of, of further disorders uh, that will have international implications. Well, as a, as a Ukraine watcher, uh, yeah. what is the future? I mean, is it bleak? How do you see it? How do you see the story unfolding? Uh, I think it can go one of two ways. Uh, we can go down the road of uh, recrimination, sanctions, threats, you know, calling Putin Hitler, all this kind of talk, uh, tit-for-tat sanctions. Or at some point, uh, people can start behaving like grown-ups, that the Europeans and the Russians especially, I think with the Americans playing a supporting role to Europe, can talk about what kind of aid Ukraine needs, what kind of restructuring, what kind of a reconciliation between different parts of the country. That conversation really isn't happening right now. And until it does, I think things are going to get worse in Ukraine, and this confrontation internationally is only going to get worse. I saw an article today, uh, analysis, where they said that, that Crimea is just one little chip, but there could be additional chips. And, and we should really, we're kind of focused there, but we should be watching the eastern uh, section of the country itself. Do you see a splintering that, that could occur, or do you think holding this thing together obviously very difficult? How do you go about it? No matter what people in Kiev are saying right now, I think Crimea is, is essentially a settled issue. The fact that the, the, uh, what passes for a government in Kiev ordered forces out of Crimea is essentially conceding it. Yes, I think further splinter, splintering is possible, and frankly, I don't think even on the Russian side they desire that. I think that's something that would, they would feel the need to take some action only in the last resort if uh, there was a complete collapse of the unity and order of the country and they, they felt they needed to do something. Um, I, I, I think that's not in the cards right now, but it easily could be. The economy's in free fall. The country's going to default on its debts. Uh, and as I say, there's almost a complete breakdown of law and order uh, in, in the constitutional system. That has to be dealt with. You and I had a chance to ch chat briefly, and you said uh, what you're seeing right now is noise. Uh, how do you get rid of the noise and really have action? What should be happening right now? Um, From a diplomacy standpoint. Essentially, the things I described. I, I think some, some people need to meet behind closed doors somewhere uh, and talk about putting Humpty Dumpty Ukraine back together rather than saying which officials in the other government are going to uh, sanction, uh, essentially to try to embarrass and pressure them. I, I don't know anybody who thinks that the sanctions being named against uh, Russia and people closest to President Putin is going to make him pull out of Crimea. I don't see how that's going to dissuade any move into, into eastern Ukraine, but it could distract us from the task that could prevent further splintering of the country. Jim, thanks so much for coming in. Certainly appreciate it. Thank you.